brewing and going on. Mm. She has some other ambitions, some other in, in, uh, um, incentives that she was after that she tied him to during that conversation. Mm. Because if she sat and said nothing outside of like, this coochie, this coochie, right. she wouldn't have got the coin. She wouldn't have married the man. He wouldn't right. see anything in her. There's no substance there. Right. But because he sat with her and gave her the opportunity, because it's easy to buy some coochie. Coochie mm-hmm. is $40, a pack of black and miles, <laughs> and, a, and a what? And a switch. Yes. Inflation is everything pay. except coochie. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, no, right? You ain't got to pay a thousand dollars for and so, it. No, you definitely <laughs> don't. You, you you don't even have to spend anything. You can right. just you can Netflix chill with some chocolate and you in there, right? So, so I want y'all to notice woman, um, it was, and I know this, this individual. I want, I want y'all to notice, okay? Now, I know some people are upset. We're going to get to the part that everybody is upset about, but I want to say this first, right? I want to say this. I think a lot of people think a lot of people have taken it to because of who she is. Hold on. I have to notice these things are still flashing. Okay. I noticed that because a lot of people think that because she, because she's talking about high figure men, high earning men, that she is a woman who sounds like every other woman we've ever heard, right? Every woman says they want a high value man. You got to go get this, get this. But I have been listening to this interview and I want to say this right quick. Okay. I have a hard time fighting exactly what she's saying. So let me go ahead and give you just a little debrief as we get into the part that gets everybody riled up. She starts the interview by saying, if you want to, so she's talking to a specific group of women. She ended up talking about this girl off the streets. She is talking about if you are a woman who wants to have a career in business, you need to go for a certain type of man. So her whole basis of what she does, she uh, she gives off courses and everything and stuff like that. Her courses are trying to get women who are business oriented, career oriented to move them over to find a man that can help invest in them so they can get a business going, get out of debt, get their credit scores up and hopefully marry the man as well. And they can build together. So she's going for this whole power couple thing, which we know normally doesn't work out, but that is where her whole mindset is coming from. And she even talks about women shouldn't go for the shoes. Women shouldn't go for the Chanel. They shouldn't go for all this. They should go for bigger and better things. But remember this, she is talking to a specific group of women. Please keep that in mind as we continue to watch. Okay. Thousands of women all over the globe. I have students in damn near every country. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's happening is that man is sitting down with an expectation of who this woman is. And she hit him with a a whole 180 Mm -hmm. and was like, but I'm also this. And I'm also aspiring to do that. And I'm also working on this. When a woman has a plan for business, you don't need a business plan. Okay. I've made like a million dollars in my company in the last couple of years Mm -hmm. in you don't need a business plan. Eventually you might when you're, you know, dealing with with actual products that you're shipping and whatever. Mm. But or you need you need, you know, some capital. But all you need is a plan for business. Right. You just got to wake up and be like, I want to do a podcast. Oh, I'm going to go on Amazon and order this backdrop. Mm. Oh, I'm going to and it, you might not even have those things accomplished, but if you can speak to it, pay attention. If you can speak to it, he will sponsor it. And it's All right, let's 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 stop it right there. Okay. Once again, we're about to get to the controversial. I just want y'all to see what she's talking about before we get right into that. Cause I want to be fair to her. I want y'all to understand the context before we hop into that part. But another thing. She, she doesn't okay. <laughs> so in this whole interview, she doesn't really talk about manifestation because y'all know how I feel about that. But you know, she very much is if not necessarily if you believe it, but more if if you want it. Go work for it. Go get it somehow. If you want to get around these certain men who make certain amount of money, she even talks about later, we might get into it, but I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a sneak peek. She says, too many women are going for the million dollar man. I rarely hear women ever say this, but she actually says, there's too many women who try to go for the million dollar man instead of the man who's making $150,000. Who can actually invest in you and actually has these things going on because all of us can't get the million dollar man. But you can get a man who is working his way up, a man who is doing something. She even says that you can go for the man who's making 80 K. So it's, it's, she has a different mindset that I've heard from most women who are like, go for the million 
in there, baby girl. Better get it. And if you can't get it, then you know what you do. You go back to college and I'm a PhD. Get that degree. So she does have a different mixture on that. Okay, let's uh, keep it moving. If you share it with him, opens the wallet mm. every single time because mm. he wants to see you win. High value men, not all men. Other men will be like, "Damn, that's that's, that's real. Good. That's dope. That's, wow, you know, know I'm a, how you going? I'm, a, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not agreeing with everything she says, but she sounds very much like what Kevin Samuels did. I'm not. Thank God, rest his soul. But Kevin used to get on there and he used to say stuff that other men would get on there and be like, what are you trying to say? Us men who make 50K a year, we can't. And he'd be like, listen, brother, if you're not, I talk to high value men. I don't talk to men like you. And he doesn't say, I have no disrespect for average earning men, but some things aren't for you. Some things aren't going to go towards you. Some things that's not meant for you. He even talks about women such as this woman. I I don't know her that well. But he talks about women like this woman. Not saying she is this. But there are some women who are this way. This they are this business career oriented. They're they're they have a goal. From the time they were young, they're like, I want to have a business. I want to do this. I need to place myself, make myself into a woman that can get a man that can help me. Her focus, in fact, this woman's focus really isn't on getting the bag. Too much as it is, get a man that can help you get the bag while you help him get the bag. I just don't hear that a whole lot of women saying, you know what, ladies, you need to focus on getting a man who can invest in you so you can invest in him so y'all can make money together. Once again, it's the power couple thing and it normally doesn't work out, but at least her mind is in the right place of the man is going to have to be part of the picture, not get him to buy you clothes and to give you all this expenses. She even goes on later to say, hey, the reason men leave you and the reason men don't want to be with you because you don't do shit but give them coochie. Y'all heard her say that earlier. You can get coochie for $40 at Netflix. You women can't keep these kind of men because you really have nothing to offer them except for that cookie cat. <laughs> cookie cat. That's what I call it. Don't worry about what I'm saying. All right, let's keep it moving. Do that yeah. <laughs> when, when you gonna do that by right? <laughs> but if you hit him with your goals and he's a high value man, if you hit him with your goals and when you want to accomplish these goals mm-hmm. by, okay, this is T. I charge 10,000 for it. So if, <laughs> if you listen and listen now, you hit him with your goals, you give him a timeline, and you let him know what you're working on, mm-hmm. not what you want to do, but what you are doing. That man will show up and show out, and the wallet and the account mm. opens right up. I agree with that. So I will say, though, there is a lot of men who have money, though, that get mistaken for a high value man. Because I will say, money doesn't make high value. All right. So here's the. Because there's a lot of men with money out here. Okay. Here's the part I was talking about earlier when I was mentioning that she's going to talk about men who um, can help you. There are certain men who have a ton of money, but we all can't get it. And and then after this part, guys, we'll get into the part that gets everybody's feathers ruffled depend on them they do not want yeah, they don't want to help you build. they want you to so how can women tell the difference between because like a man will do for you as far as he might buy you a bag mm-hmm. you know he might give you a little money but he never gonna give you enough to really invest in your yeah, business yeah. to do something yeah. Yeah. that's because women make the mistake of allowing the man to lead and determine when we find a man with some money we get all excited like mm-hmm. coochie is instantly yeah. okay. we start sweating I'm we sweating text right our home girl like he ain't even did nothing he hasn't nothing. even sneezed on you yet yeah. right he bought mm-hmm. you two drinks at the bar you had a little conversation now your coochie is dripping down to your ankles mm-hmm. Right. So what happens is we move too soon and we get too excited too fast because we never had no money. Right. Right. So when you, that's why the women that do operate different than the women that don't. Mm. Right. When you ain't never had it, you're impressed by the littlest thing. Yep. Right. But if you lead with what it is you're working on and you drop those cues to him and you let him know what it is that you desire and you're not talking about bags and shoes, he's going to treat you basic and bag and shoe you to death mm-hmm. because that's what he knows is easy. Right. right. He's not being challenged, so he's not going to rise to the challenge. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. But when you set a- now, now, this is where we kind of split up just a tad bit. I, I don't when she talks about these kind of men, I'm kind of I get kind of confused because the kind of men that she is talking about, the kind of men who are earning that top dollar money, talking about that hundred fifty two, three, four hundred five thousand dollars a year. She talks as if these men don't think business already. 
So she says, she says, oh, well, he's going to want to buy. And this is where I think she is not necessarily saying go for the million dollar man or the fifty five hundred thousand dollars a year man or even the two hundred thousand dollar year man. Because the way she speaks is that the man's not necessarily a top, top earner. He is a top, he's a high earning man, not necessarily top earning, though. Because the way she says it, like, oh, man, this, this guy might come up to you and he's not a real, not necessarily a real man, but certain men are going to want to uh, invest and make build you up and do all this. And I just don't believe that part. I think men are fine with getting some a woman who's not necessarily trying to build her business, trying to build her career. That's why I think she's talking to a specific subset of women. There are some women who don't, most people don't want to build a business. Most people, when they think about business owning, they kind of think about, I just want to earn money the easy way. Most people don't really want to run a business. They don't want to be up working 10, 12, 13, 14 hours a day. When they get off work, they got to go right back to work. They have to spend all night getting into this, trying to figure out the numbers because it takes a while to even get a business up and running, let alone bringing you in passive income, right? I'm going to speak on this right quickly. Just for my people who think this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff I hear about people who say they want to get into real estate. They're like, oh, I'm going to make that money. Baby girl, you get a 3% commission. How much do you think you really have to sell to be top earning? You got to sell over two, three, three million dollars worth of real estate to start getting into this money that you're talking about. Okay. I don't know why some of these, that's not just women, but people who get into real estate think that this is going to be this easy life. You get 3% on every property you sell and not mentioning that money. You may go, you may not be having money that whole time. Selling these properties ain't going to come one after another. Just bing, 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 bing. If y'all need, need to know more about this, go check out Spencer Cornelia. He has a, uh, you can go to his main channel or you can go to his real estate channel. He gives you a breakdown of what it's like to be really in real estate. And so my, my point is, is this concept of, most women aren't going to want to work 10 to 12 hour days to build their business with a man at all. It's hard work. So she has to be talking to that very, 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 very small set of women who want to build a business while trying to maintain a marriage. Very few women can do that because it's hard to do, especially if you have a man who's also in business. And the power couple thing is almost impossible to make work. Not saying it is, but it's hard to make power couple things work because both of you are working so much and men who work that much are like, damn, I'd rather have my wife at home. I don't need her working with me. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right. A little bit more. We're going to get to that part. Tone in the Patience, people. I always say, speak to it early and often. Because if you sit down with a chick and she's talking about fashion and shoes and clothes, and you're going to take her to Chanel. Yeah. If you sit down with a chick and she's talking about building her business and not quite having enough in her bank account to buy this building or make this next move, your goal is to now help her achieve that thing because you want a piece of pussy. Right. And so if you want to get that piece of pussy, you're going to help her hit her goal so she gets all expensive. That part also I don't agree with. Yeah, man, man, don't do all that for a piece of cookie. I'm not doing all that for cookie. Nope. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you could spend 30 minutes in Chanel and get your bag and walk out and it's done. And now you're like legs to the ceiling in a hotel room. Right. You know what I mean? Red bottoms on still. <laughs> <laughs> so excited about these shoes. You oh, getting so blown weird. out in these shoes. Yes. Right. But then you go home to and your like, broke ass yep. apartment mm -hmm. with your bad credit score and your little hoopty and whatever. Even those girls that don't got, they got some money because they had a man buy them a car or whatever and they stunting and they think that shit is cute. Mm. But then men don't invest in you. And you're like, right. why coach? Why these men don't give me no money? Because yeah. you're not investable. I don't know if right. that's a word, but it is now. It you is. Just They're not giving him something to invest in. There's no value there. So where do you want him to? He's a businessman. Girl, mm -hmm. he's a businessman. He's not just throwing his money out there. Unless he's in a strip club. He is not. That's true. He's not. He's wise with his income. Yeah. He's See, not just like, I will admit this. Okay. Now we're going to get it for it. I know you guys are waiting for that. I just want to say this one more time. Listen, it sounds like she actually talks with high value men, not dates them, not sucks them, not fluffs them. You know what I mean? It doesn't sound like she's just 
being with these men to have a good night. Sometimes she actually knows what she's talking about, at least when it comes to high value men, because she's right. Businessmen don't just throw their money up. Maybe some, some businessmen, there are some men who have money that go to the trip club, whatever. The fuck does that mean? Okay. What is going on? I don't know. Put this thing on there. I don't know what's going on. Uh, listen. My point is, it sounds like she actually knows what she talks about when it comes to this high value men. They don't just throw their money away. They don't just do this. She goes way more in debt. And I really, I really hope you guys go watch the full interview before you just break her down. But let's get into the part that gets everybody's feathers up in a rustes and it gets everybody ready to fight. Round one, fight. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, so talk about, um, because we do have male listeners as well. So right. talk about what dating would look like for, you know, a guy well, who's not. maybe making just like 100000 a year. You know, mm-hmm. and he wants, he's a high value man mm-hmm. in every aspect of it. He's mm-hmm. a good guy, but maybe he doesn't have the income to be, you know, yeah. giving $10,000 yeah, to a woman yeah. to, you know, invest in her business. Absolutely. So what does dating look like for like the average? 100000 is not even the average person. Let's, right. Right. let's, yeah. let's keep it so real. So let's, yeah. let's keep it real for the average person who is mm-hmm. making $50,000. That's mm-hmm. a good person. What does dating look like for them? So if you're making $50,000, don't date. Ooh. I'm I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date. Again, I'm with you. You're not right. ready to date. And you're not ready to date because courtship costs. Okay. Everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park, but eventually, Shorty is going to need a sip of something. She's going to be thirsty. <laughs> this <laughs> bottle of water is $3 in Atlanta. Let's <laughs> oh, not play. Please. So if you don't have any expendable cash, don't date. And whatever that looks like for you, you might only make 50000 but you live in a shoe. And and now you got expendable cash. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm not saying you got to pay to play to be with a woman. I'm simply saying courtship costs. Right. It is not free it's to nice. date. Mm. Like some of us can't even take our homegirl out and be in it. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about that part right there. Let's go ahead and just start it off right there. Okay. Hmm. For you know the people who aren't watching the stream, I probably just skipped ahead and y'all didn't get to see me struggle. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't get to this part easily. Sorry about that. So let's get into this. So number one. She's got a point. I mean, can we say she got a point? Can we at least say she has a point, people? Listen, she does have something going on with that. If you are a man and you make 50K a year, and listen, I want to say this right quick, just for my people who don't understand, and I can't believe I got my freaking shirt dirty somehow. I got to wash this now. But for my men who make that 50K a year, for you people who have never made 50K a year, yeah, that might seem like a lot of money, but when you have health insurance, car insurance, kids, um, you have to have an emergency fund, your vehicles, you have to make sure your vehicles are maintained, you have to have house insurance, you have to have a lot of shit going on in your life. Car insurance, I don't know if I named that. Guys, $50,000 can go just like that, okay? $50,000 goes down the drain quickly. And that's why, honestly, some of you guys hear why teachers complain that they don't get paid enough. It is a, a a difficult amount of money to make spread. Okay, unless you have another income coming in, fifty thousand dollars a year alone is not enough. And I'm going to say something that some people just may not agree with. I agree with her. If you are a man making fifty k with no expendable, nothing, you do not need to be dating, sir. You do not know how to financially uh uh be responsible. Okay, I get that. Hell. I'm still a man who tries to put it together. I try, guys, it takes me a lot because I come from a bad financial background. I'm always going to spend every dime I got. I've got to the point, guys. Let me just go into mine. I used to spend money on food at the gas station, right? For my blue collar at work because I drive around so much. I used to go to gas stations, buy a $6 burrito. Guys, I can make a, I can make for $6. I, I bought all the ingredients today. Because this is where my mind has to go. I, I used to buy drinks at gas stations. I can get drinks here. I could fill up a whole jug with something I like to drink. It's that kind of stuff right there that ma- that makes where you can have more spendable money, right? I have to be smart. So instead of spending my money, and this is just me giving examples, whatever works for you, works for you. But instead of me spending $6 on a burrito, 
can make the same amount of burritos for the entire week and next week for less than six bucks. Based off my calculations, in the amount of burritos I can make for six dollars, I can make, I would be saving myself uh, about twenty dollars a week. It might not seem like a lot, but twenty dollars a week—that's forty dollars bi-weekly. Forty dollars by week that's eighty dollars a month. Eighty dollars a month, that's nine hundred and sixty dollars a year. If you add that up over five, six years, I'm gonna save a ton of money. I'll be saving almost a thousand dollars a year. Not eating burritos. Now imagine you do that with other shit in your life. Imagine you don't spend five dollars at Starbucks every damn day. What does that add up to? All right? You keep doing that. Next thing you know, now you're not buying Starbucks or making burritos. Now you're saving yourself $2,000 a year. Now you're not, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Now you're saving yourself $4,000 a year. That stuff adds up, especially when you are making lower money. So yes, I agree that you need, if you do not have money to even do anything, like even go on a date, no, baby, you do not need to be going on free walks every single night. Because if you can't afford to go on dates, I'm not saying you have to, but if you can't even afford to go on dates, yeah, I don't think you should date. You should go get your financial stability together. Because one thing I think that men really fuck up on is getting with somebody because they're lonely. Too many men get with somebody and they're lonely and broke. Guess who did that same shit? Uh, Put the camera on me, please. Your boy. Let me tell y'all something. I'm always pretty open. I'm not going to tell y'all everything. Damn, you nosy mother. But yeah, you know, when I first got my wife, me and my wife, we had a house. We had a house. We had everything. Old Dumbo decided to move away because things were getting a little hot and heavy where we were living. So I moved us away. Right. You don't want to know where me and my wife slept on. We slept on the floor. And then we slept on a mattress on the floor. And now we sleep in king beds. But it took a long ass time for us to get here. Guys, it's not that long ago that I was going to the food pantry to feed my wife while she was pregnant. We were fucking struggling, man. Struggling. My wife was working at a place where we had to get, sometimes she could bring food home. But when she couldn't, especially during the summers. I had to go to the food pantry just to get us something to eat. That was, I shouldn't, to be honest with you, I should not have been. Hey, let me tell y'all a secret. I should not have been in a relationship. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I am just now getting it together. Now we have nice things, but motherfucker, I'm not close to being where I need to be. It takes time to do this, man. And I understand being alone. You know how much I talk about men get it. I don't want men to be lonely. I don't want men to have to go through this. However, the last thing I want you men to do is get with somebody, get a girl pregnant, get a, get a baby, and now you're making $40,000 a year, and it's hard to scrape by. I would rather you be lonely, get yourself up to that sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year where you can live comfortably with a woman if she brings in some extra income at work. But if she uh, can't work, you know how to live off your money. You may be making eighty thousand dollars a year, but you're not living off every fucking cent. You're making eighty thousand dollars, maybe you're living off fifty of that, maybe sixty of that. You got a good emergency fund. You got your debts paid off. I'd rather you men do that and be lonely for a few years than get with somebody making forty thousand dollars a year with a baby. I just don't want that for you men. I would never suggest a man do that. So I know some of you guys are upset with that. And I know $50,000 a year, $59,000 a year, I believe, is the average $42,000 for black men. I know. But I know what it's like to make $40,000. It's not a lot. I'm just saying be careful. Do what the fuck you want to, but be careful. You peeling off a little check for shorty Mm drink. So it's like, why do we expect anything else of women with a man? Like, fellas, if you're broke, don't date. You're not ready to date yet. Or get you a bottom of the barrel bitch that's going to date you when you have no money. That's what I was about to ask. If she doesn't want anything financial from you, if she doesn't have that expectation, and I'm going to tell you this right now, 
enjoy it while it lasts because eventually you're going to want to run because she doesn't stretch you. She doesn't make you the man that you need to become in Mm -hmm. order to thrive in this world. Right. She doesn't set expectations for you. She allows you to be the stagnant dude in the same jeans for three days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and, you be cutting up. You talk about me. You be cutting up. I'm cut up cocaine. That's um, (laughs) look, you still got it. (laughs) They say they be tripping when they wear the same jeans for three days. Hey, they work hard. Listen, I don't want that either. Like, I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I've dated drug dealers in my past, and that's cute that's and everything same. when you're in your 20s. Yeah, I'm 35 years old. Right. I am not dating no damn drug dealer. Don't know mm-hmm. who's going to run up in my door. Don't know what's going to happen. You need to be married, though. Out together. You can't protect me. It doesn't matter how much protection you have on you. Yeah. Right? You can't protect me if that's what you're doing, and that's your motive, and that's, that's how you get your money. Yeah. And let's be honest, I don't really know many rich drug dealers. Because they live that life. They're right. spending it. As yep. fast as it's coming, they're spending it. And so you might come up on a little a little come up in a man that's like, here, baby, here's 20 bands. And if you're smart with it, mm-hmm. you'll go do with it what you what you know you need to do. Right. But- okay, so uh, let's, let's continue off that. Most, Like I told you, most women aren't busy, business oriented. Most men aren't. Most people in the world don't give a fuck about business, okay? Most men, most women are going to, they do what she says. You get that 20. Well, I'll let her finish and then I'll explain. Hustler, you don't. Because the money's keep trying rolling to keep, in. You're yeah. trying to keep up with the Joneses. He, yeah. he take you out. His homies all got girls in Chanel and, and Balenciagas and whatever. Mm. And you're like, damn, I need to go get that. And so you go take your little money and you go shopping. To- go get it. Try to get a Birkin, which you can't get normally, guys. It, it, it takes time to get a Birkin. I don't know why people think they can get 20 bands and go buy a Birkin. No, you can't do that. But nonetheless, I'm from a town and... I, I told you guys, y'all already know my story. We're not going to dig into it. But even me personally, you know, I'm trying, uh, I'm moving back to the city here in about a year, back to the big city where it's a, it's a different life. You know what I'm saying? Right now I live in the country. People out here, you can't front. People know if you got that money because this town is so small. People know they know what your bills are. They know if you're behind on the bills. They know exactly what your not necessarily what your bank account, what's in your bank account because they can't do that. That'd be too much. But they gonna know. They everybody has friends, but somebody who probably works somewhere where you gotta pay bills and money. They gonna know what kind of money you're bringing in, especially if you work in town. They know how much to good. Put. They know how much you get paid. Okay, they ain't stupid. Okay, if, even if you work in like. Uh, we have like a gas place around here. Even if you work there, they know how much money you get paid an hour. They are not dumb. So you can't front where I live. You either got it or you don't. And that has been such a blessing for me. Cause I, like she said, you can go try to keep up with the Joneses. You can't do this in this town. If you try to front where I live, try to front like you got money, people gonna know immediately that you're faking. So there's no point of even fucking trying. If you ain't got it, you ain't got it. Just go live how you live because most people don't care how much money you got. They don't care. You can't, even the women around here, you you don't have to try to impress them because they already know how much you make. So you might as well just be who you are. The thing is, when I get back to the big city, I gotta, I'm going to have to get used to being around people again and, and with myself, try to make sure I stay in control. Don't try to keep up with the Jones. Joneses. Don't try to go buy that those that fancy ass car that you can't afford monthly. Don't go get a nice ass house you can't afford monthly. You go live in that whatever you can and don't you don't have to live in the best part of the damn city. Okay? Go live in a place where you're comfortable. Guys, the point of our lives and yes, we live in a capitalist world. I told you, you have to choose. You have to make a choice. One choice is going to be, well, I'm going to get out here I'm going to live my normal life. I'll be happy making $60,000 a year, but I'm going to be there for my kids. I'm going to be at everything. I'm going to be there for my family. Fine. But at the end of your life, you may not have a lot of money. You may have to end up in a home. Okay. To get to that, that one point, whatever million dollars they say you have to have to retire on. And you have to do that for you and your wife where y'all both have to have it. The chances of you doing that, making $56,000 a year, probably not going to happen. Especially if y'all start having kids, a lot of that money is going to go away, especially if they go help the kids go to college. And you're only making 60000 You're just not going to get there, buddy. That's 18. Well, if you have multiple kids, you're talking 20, 25 years 
of raising the kids before you can even start to really invest in stuff like that, because a lot of your money's going back to your kids. If you want to do that and be a family man, you can absolutely do that. But there's the other side of the coin where you put your head down and you're like, fuck it, my family is going to have something after I'm dead and gone. Well, I'm at least trying to get as far down the road as I can where, where if I, when I'm gone, my family is good and my grandkids are good. And I hope that they can carry it on. But you think you're going to be at your kids? You think you're going to be at your kids' soccer game? Nope. You think you're going to be at your kids' football game? Nope. Ballet? Nope. Concert? Nope. You're not going to be around for a lot of stuff. You may miss the most important times in your kid's life. It's a choice you have to make if you don't already have it. Now, hopefully your son doesn't have to make that decision, right? Because if you have a, you know, if you make all that money, your son will have that money. So he may not have to necessarily, he may be able to take over the business or whatever you got going on or learn the expertise that you learned and go from there. And he will have, be able to do much more in his life where he may not have to miss all that stuff. He may be able to be there for more things because of what you've done and how you invested your money. He doesn't necessarily have to work his ass to the ground unless he wants to do that. But sometimes we have to sacrifice one or the other. I can either be there. My kids always know I'm going to be there. They're going to look out in the crowd and say, hey, there's my dad. Or a lot of times they're going to look out into the crowd and dad's not going to be there. Both suck. Both one you're going to end life where your kids may have to help you. You may have to go live with your kids at the end of your life and you're not going to have much money to go off of. And they got to do the grinding and the, the getting their, getting their, all that money and trying to get to it, which is fine. Both ways, that way can still work. You can still develop a strong family that way. In the other route, damn, they might like, they might love you as a dad and they might say, fuck my dad because my dad was never there. He was always working, always. Can't have it both ways, baby. You just can't. And so that's what I, I I just agree with her with the, you know, yeah, you can go spend all that money on Chanel and get all that stuff and try to keep up with the Joneses. But at the end of the day, your credit score, your credit score is still in the 600s now. And your credit score needs to be in the eight. But you're fucking around trying to keep up with Keisha down there. You're trying to keep up with Sarah over here. You're trying to keep up with Maria over there. You're trying to keep up with everybody. But it make you a little boomerang. Mm-hmm. And now your bank account is suffering until he gives you another chunk. Right. You don't know how long that's going to be. How long that's going to last. That's true. So realistically, you just have to be wise with who you date. Because as a man, you can easily slip into a situation with a woman that keeps you stagnant and at the bottom. Mm. If you get with a woman that's moving... And she's got what I say now, motion. Yeah, yeah motion. a little, a little motion. <laughs> I got motion. I got a little seasoning, a little, <laughs> a, a little aged. Okay, like like fine wine. But but yeah, when you got a little motion and you're in action, right? You can elevate a man easily, one that wants to be right. Mm-hmm. Okay, but if you're making fifty k and you're looking for one of these, you're not Ain't getting that. Okay. You're not getting that, and it's not about uh, uh, shoes. Let me be fair, man. Cost this and my Mac. Let me be fair. I know some of you men out there are like, oh, I don't want them. Yes. Are these women? I don't I don't think she's married. She said that she's been in a relationship for four years. I'm not sure if they're actually married. I know all these women wear rings on their fingers, but that doesn't always mean that they're married. As far as I know, the other two for sure aren't married. But let me say this. I know some of you men are going to be like, well, ain't nobody going to want you anyway. You're about to get ready to buy that dog <laughs> and die alone. I get it. I get that's the route we all want to go. But guys, there are some women you just can't get. There are some women in this world making 50K a year that are never. And here's the thing. And here's the thing that some of you men need to also understand. Listen, like I said, we can get on her case. I got it. I get it. We've been down that road. I understand. We've already talked. We talk about women all the time who go for men they can't get. That's the whole reason I have the whole. That's the reason I pull the Kevin Sayings. I talk about that all the time. But I want to say this. If you're not making that kind of money, these women won't check for you. Yes, they may end up unmarried. They may be maybe successful women making their bread. And they may go to bed at night alone with sparks. (laughs) And that's all they get for the rest of their days. But these women still will not check for you, brother. 
No matter how much you beg, no matter how much you cry, no matter how much you get on your soap opera and say, I make 50K, be with me. They don't care about you. They're not checking for you. They're not coming for you. They not. They don't care what you do with your life. These women will never even notice you. So you don't need to worry about these kind of women. For you men who get out there and start crying sometimes, well, I don't want that kind of, I don't want that bitch anyway. Don't worry about it. She'll never check for you making 50K. She'll never even look in your direction. She won't. Okay, these women have already set their mind on what they want. The only way they're going to get that kind of man that they want, they're going to have to change some things, okay? But you don't have to worry about that, young man. She will never look in your direction. That's a harsh truth. Some of us men need to deal with. She ain't looking my way, damn it. None of these women are looking my way. Not that I need them, I'm married, but I'm saying, even if I wasn't, if I was a single man out here again, these women would not look Trey's way, okay? One, I'm short. They probably looking over my head anyway. These women look tall as hell, okay? I don't know if they are, but these women look, the one on the right, the one who's doing the most talking, not the lady, but the one on the right, she look like she filed a five. She look right over my head. She not checking for me. So sometimes men just going about your business, sitting here ranting and driving out. People who make that kind of money, yeah, I think they have more to give to it because they can be like, ah, oh, no, I wouldn't go for a woman like that because they make that kind of money, you know. But for most men out here, these women will never check for you. They won't. I'm sorry, career women who try to get to the bag, they don't look for men who make 50k. They never will. It just is what it is. Because I told you, 50K is not a lot. And if a woman's making over 50K a year, if a woman's making six figures a year, guys, there's no fucking way on earth she's going for you. I'm sorry. Some women will, but most women won't. Let's stop playing. Let's stop playing games. Makeup yeah. course. It's, it ain't about that. At it's all. about what experiences can you do for me? How can you elevate me mentally mm-hmm. if you're still stuck at 50K and comfortable? Right, right. 50K okay, is I not comfortable. Right. So I've nice. made 50K before, and baby, I was getting yellow tags on the door. All Especially the if you're making 50K in Atlanta, Cali, Austin, Dallas, New York City, and certain places in Florida. 50K, you, you can barely survive on that. And 50K may seem a lot if you live in a small town, but if you live in a city, baby, 50K. Because think about this, guys. When you live in a big city, too, just small things like gas is going to cost you more. Driving around the city versus driving around in the country where there's one stoplight, it's much different when you're in the city, baby. You're going to run through 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars of gas a week. Mm-hmm. My electric about to be shut off. It's just Honestly, not realistic it's not, in this it's economy. Not yeah. It's not fun to be at 50. It's nice. So for the fellas that's making 50, use this little word to inspire you to tap into the things that you know. Knowledge is the new currency. Right. For real, for real. You could sell knowledge like this. See, does mm-hmm. it sound like she's being disrespectful? To me personally, I just I just don't see her being disrespectful towards that. I, I just think sometimes us men, we get in our feelings. I used to be the same damn way. But anytime I heard a woman say she wouldn't give it an average man, guess who's that hurt? My feelings. <laughs> my feelings. My help me. But yeah, it was me. Yeah. But guys, it's, it, I get how dating is today. But she's not a woman who's working at McDonald's saying this. Now, if this was a woman working at McDonald's and got no skills, and like I said, I don't know her person. I don't know if she's a great person. I don't know. But what I've looked into, she doesn't like a woman who's working. She, I know she doesn't work on fries at McDonald's. So sometimes, guys, just because a woman says it, like, because we all know if, uh, who's somebody single? I don't know anybody single that's making that kind of money right now. But let's say somebody who's young, even, you know what? Let's say Ice Spice when she's 30 years old. Hopefully she gets out of that twerking and bullshit. But let's say Ice Spice grows up, matures, and becomes a really actual successful artist without shaking her ass. Okay, let's say somehow she gets there. She's 30 years old. She's not quite married yet, but she is bringing in, let's just give it a $300,000 a year. I don't know how much these artists be making. I know some of them make way more than that. I know some of them make way less. But let's just give her something that. Let's say, Ice Spice is bringing in $300,000 a year just from her music. And then she's making maybe $500,000 a year when she gets the brands and everything like that. I can no longer hear myself, but let's just keep it moving. 
let's say that she's doing all of that. And then she says, well, you know what? I couldn't date a man make, making 50 K. Will we all complain about that? Of course we wouldn't because we understand that's how it works. We understand that's how it goes. That's just how it is. Sorry. It's weird when I can't hear myself. So let's stop getting in our feelings every time some woman comes across and says, hey, I can't do, I can't be with the man who makes 50K. If you make 50K and you have no money to spend and you're broke, then I would suggest you not dating. That is not her saying that 50K and average men, they're, them are ass. But some women just aren't going to go for that, men. Some men, some women are career women. Some women are business oriented. Some women do get men who make that kind of money. They do. There are women who get those kind of men, guys. It's not like there's no woman on the planet who can get those men. And not every woman who gets a man like that is traditional. Let's let's stop it. Not every woman who's going to get a man who makes that kind of money is a traditional man. Sometimes it is a little different. All right. Give me a quick second while I fix this. Lord help me. I mean, y'all. Y'all out here kind of crazy. Y'all out here wilding, boy. Wilding. Mm-hmm. And so whatever you've experienced in whatever line of work you got, I mean, we got fellas running the show. You know what I'm saying? They behind the scenes on the cameras. They doing, They can teach all of that to someone else and make money. Right. Just from that alone. Just from that little knowledge alone. Big knowledge, really. Right. Right. right? right. So like these fellas underestimate the power of what they've been through mm-hmm. and their experiences. And they think that, oh, it's just, you know, an experience. Just, oh, I did this and tuck it in the back. No, you can sell those secrets to what you did and what you've experienced and make more money. Yeah, people get so offended too when you say that they shouldn't date when they don't have no money. But I 100% agree with you. It's but they're funny. also broke. That's true. Those are the people. It's, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Those are the, the only people they get offended by It's never like, <gasps> yeah. don't date when you're broke. Right. He probably yeah, probably is going to that. that. Yeah, because I feel like your focus needs to be elsewhere. If you don't have any money, you can't even enjoy life. No. You, and so you I think that's the woman, part that's getting deep. a few people, too, is... Let me turn this right up a little bit. So y'all can see the big belly. Damn, hell, I'll be messing up my damn time. This time look good, don't it? Ah! Anyway, sorry about that. Calm down, Dre. Okay, so <laughs> gotta have a little fun on the camera. Um, but I think that's where some people also get messed up is because now that they've heard 50K, they think that these women are saying 50K is broke. They're not. They're saying a man who makes 50K and ain't and that's all he has, and he doesn't know what to do with his money, and he's literally making 50K in Atlanta, where 50K won't do anything for you. Okay. 50K is not the same everywhere. So, yes, they're going to consider 50K at the bottom, but 50K where in Atlanta, it's, it's going to be tough to live. You can live in Atlanta making 50K, but there are certain parts of Atlanta we all know. There are certain parts of Atlanta that you will not get into. You will not be going to. You will not be going. You will not be a part of that community making 50K a year. Anything. Right. Women need yeah. things. It affects your mental. Yeah. It affects your challenges and Bro, how you face be mean. them. And they be yes. okay. They be okay. 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 See, that's where that's where that that's where it starts to go off the rails. I know some of you guys like the word nigga. I just do not like when black women call us that. I don't call my me. This is a, this is a personal thing. I know some of you guys call each other that. That's fine. But I feel like when women say, especially in the context when we're talking about money, as soon as I hear the word niggas, that's put that's being that that's like them saying there's black black men make money, niggas don't. And it's like, what are you saying? So you're trying to say a man who's not making that kind of money is a nigga? That's where I separate and that's where I start to break off. I'm so sick of that right there. That bothers me. A man who is making fifty, forty two thousand dollars doesn't make him a nigga because he's getting it together or he's doing what he can, or maybe he is okay making that kind of money. It doesn't make him a nigga. He's still a black man. You don't have to disrespect or say anything like that. I don't know this woman personally, but I just noticed when women talk when the women want to be disrespectful to men, 
They tend to black it's black men. When women be able to be disrespectful to black men, they call them niggas. Cause I don't hear them calling white men stuff like that. I don't hear white black women go, if if he's a broke white boy, they don't go crackle. They don't call him something else. They don't call him all this other shit. Something disrespectful. They call if a black man, as soon as they want to demean a black man, they call him a nigga. I and that's why I don't use the word me personally. You want to use it in your songs, fine. I don't give a fuck. But for me personally, that's why I don't use it because of how it is used today. The men I'm around, we do not call each other niggas. Okay? Now this other people be like, nigga, please. This nigga right here, <laughs> this nigga's wild. I get it. But I don't know, man. It's just something that goes up in my soul when I hear black women when they want to separate who they deem is a man and who they deem is not a man. When it comes to black men, the black men who are doing all this and blowing her back out or stupid shit like that, they'll call them a black man. Maybe. And then, but when it's a black man they for sure don't like or they don't have any respect for, what do they normally say? Niggas. Can't get down with that, poor minds. Can't get down with that. Oh, y'all are called clowns? Are you talking about you talking about white men? What white men are called clowns? Sorry, I showed you your other one first. Is that what you're saying? They call white men clowns? You know what? You probably got a point there. But I feel like black men are called clowns too. You so mad. I think black women they when they don't want to be disrespectful, they won't call black men niggas. They'll say Clowns. And I'll find now see I can live with clowns. I can live with clowns. Cause I call people clowns. But you never hear me say these even when I'm talking about people black men who are you know in, in the gang life or they're 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 a hazard to society, they're people I wouldn't be associated with. Even these these some of these black men who go around ruining people's lives. The pranksters. I'm talking about black pranksters. I would never call them niggas. I would call them what you said, I call them clowns. But I call every race of men clowns. So you know, know what I mean? I don't go to that word as a disrespectful thing. If it's supposed to be a term of endearment, then make it that. But black women don't make that a term of endearment. Just like us men will say bitches, right? It's a term of endearment between them. So if women want to call each other bitches, fine. They can that can be a term of endearment for them. Right? But if a man comes out and says this bitch. What does it sound like? It's disrespectful. So it's the same word when I hear the word niggas. Yeah, men can call each other niggas as a term of endearment. I get it. But when a woman starts saying it, it's a whole different world. It's, it goes both ways, but I just don't like, I just don't like it. Cause now she, the way she said it was, oh, if you're making 50K, you, whatever. They'd be quick in the bed too. Three what seconds mean? and they'd be like, oh, oh my God. That's- that was amazing. <laughs> You're like, I didn't even, I didn't even blink. See, I don't see when they talk. I know they're making jokes. Okay, tongue in cheek, fine. I know they're not dead ass serious, but that's kind of weird too. With the whole sex thing, it's like some men they got places to be. They gonna be like, you know what, girl, yeah, like I, I ain't got five hours to sit in this bed and you know do it all night. I got thirty minutes. I got to get back. I got to get to bed, or I got to get. I got other stuff I got to do. Money don't stop. What's happening? And, and it's because that's stagnant mentality. That's why you see some men who, and I'm not for this, but that's why some men will just get prostitutes. Why don't you get a prostitute? That, not a off the street prostitute. I'm talking about high class prostitutes, not necessarily an escort. And they wouldn't call them that. But there's women out there for men who have money. They gonna show you a good time, and it's gonna be fast. And they're not gonna judge you. They're not gonna call you little dick energy. You are gonna get your business in, get out. I'm not for that. Obviously, I'm for sex and marriage. But I'm just saying, there's men out there who be like, you know what? I'm gonna pay my. Uh, and they can get up there. I'm gonna pay my two hundred. I'm gonna pay my two thousand dollars. Get this nice clean cookie and get on about my day. I got places to be. I don't need to wine and dine and no two thousand dollars. All right, I'm in. I'm out. Some men making that kind of money, two thousand dollars ain't nothing to them. They're gonna pay for some nice cookie and move on along. You in every area. Yes. Your friends are terrible. You have no loyalty in mm-hmm. your circle. You got you, you know issues within your family. Like, and I'm not saying that these things don't happen when you have money, right? But they occur much more often and last much longer when the pain point is 
how much do I get right. paid? Right. Like, it's real. So for fellas, and, and now, mind you, you don't have to be the richest man in the room. You just have to be the one most willing. Right. I say this to my students all the time. Stop searching for the richest man in the room because we all not getting a millionaire. Right. We're I want to say something. Here. She's a little thick. Okay, she, she she's a little bit of a, the she's the grande size caramel at uh, Starbucks. Isn't the grande is that the biggest, or am I am I tripping? Is that the small? Is the grande is the venti. I, I I don't I don't ever go to Starbucks. You can see she got some rolls going on. Hey baby, hey, this is coming from a guy who got the belly. Okay, well I want to say this right quick. This is just the offside. Women, I told you when you're on the thicker side, this is how you need to dress. I made a video not too long ago talking about if you're big, you need to wear stuff like this. You need to look as nice as possible. Sometimes we all, we all struggling somewhere. All of us got a weakness. Damn it. Do your best. That's all. She looks good to me. We're not all baggy. I'm not saying she a 10, but for a big girl, she at least dressed nice. Somewhere. Ain't enough CEOs. Mm -hmm. I said this. A long time ago on the show, I said, y'all will be chasing this man worth $10 million and he's not going to give you nothing. And you passing up the guy who makes $150,000 that'll take you around the world mm -hmm. just with him. Right. I, I tell this story all the time. I know y'all heard it a thousand times, but I went on a first date to Paris one mm -hmm. time. And mm -hmm. the guy, he had a, he worked for Google. He made six figures. He had a good job. He loved to travel. Mm -hmm. And he would love taking me places. And I, that was my first time doing something like mm -hmm. that. But I was like, he wasn't a, no millionaire. No, he simply was smart. He know you book the flight on a Tuesday. The exactly. Tuesday. You leave on a Thursday. You come back on Sunday morning. Monday. Yep. You, he just knew. And we had a yeah, time. And I just told her. We were I actually know people who do early. that. Said, who book flights like that. Said, you know, when he bought me that flight, that flight was like four hundred some dollars. You know, He's this one, 2017 like, yeah. me was like, oh my God, girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was like, but I feel like if you have a man who's giving, that's gonna mean more any time. So anyway, that's pretty much the video, guys. Okay, so y'all go, y'all go check it out. Y'all go show, show them some love. Shout out to Poor Minds, great interview. Uh, I really suggest watching the whole thing before y'all just go in on her. I mean, please, if you got the time to complain, make some time to fucking watch the video. Okay, shout out to Poor Minds once again. This is episode two seventy four, Broke Batty Mountain featuring Talitha Trope. Okay, let me say this. And when we digged into this one, this is a long one, uh, as the lead attorney would say, and he's a little bit more graphic than me, but um, mm, I don't even know another way to say it. We just say we we in the we in the marathon today, baby. For this video, we 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 roll it. He says long stroking, but this video, this is a it's a long one, okay? Because I really wanted to dig into this, okay? They want to make it a fourteen minute video. I wanted to make this long, baby. Okay, because I really wanted to give you guys just an alternate. I do understand why people would be upset with hearing that 50K part. I get it. It's because us average men hear that shit all the time. I wanted to give you all an average man. I'm not over here making 10, 20, $30,000 a month. Okay, I'm talking from an average man standpoint. I make a little bit more than the average man, but damn it, it ain't that much more. Okay, I'm working my way up. One of these days, I hope to be able to get on here and be like, hey, guys. But I won't be a high value man for a very long time. So, hey, I'm not that kind of guy. One day, maybe we may see those days. But as right now, I can tell you from an average man standpoint, I can see how that could piss you off, especially if you're single. Okay, I'm sure for the men who are married, they don't really give a fuck. But the men who are single, oh, I can see how I can get under your feathers. But I want to say this, guys. Who cares? These women, like I said, they won't check for you. They won't go for you. And for y'all thinking that if if you have, you make 50K, you shouldn't date. Remember what you said. If you make 50K and you don't have any expendable money, maybe you shouldn't. That's me. I believe the same thing. If you make 50K and you live in a city where 50K don't go very far, that dollar you got is like 35 cents where you live. Yeah, you probably shouldn't date because it's only more stressful, man. If you're barely making it now, there's no way you're going to be able to date. OK, unless you get a woman who brings in that extra income and she's fine um, providing and helping. But even then, that's marriage. We're talking down the road. That's a different story. We're talking about just dating. And here's the thing. And this may you disagree because I don't I don't agree with shacking up and all that. So if you're dating a woman, I don't think there should be this whole 50 50, all that. When y'all are dating, your money is your money. Her money is her money. That's it. That's a wrap. And especially if you. <laughs> 
50K is not broke. But I'm saying if you're broke, like you're making 50K in a certain particular area where 50K don't go very far, or you're bad with the money, so you never have any, why the hell would you date somebody? There's nothing you can really even, y'all can't even do things. Going on a free picnic walk is, not, is, is great. But if you're going to get with a woman with the vision of marrying her, brother, when you get married, that those finances start to hit hard, boy. Unless she just says, "Hey, here's all my money. Good luck." And your fifty k goes to a hundred thousand because of hers. Okay, you can make that work. You absolutely can make a hundred k work with two of y'all. And unless you're living in that city I'm talking about, and that fifty k is more like thirty k where you live, then you're not really making a hundred k. You're making like sixty. It's it's, it's going to be rough. Okay, when insurance and all that kind of stuff comes in, boy, it's just a different world when you live in the city. So maybe y'all should move where that money can go further if you can make that same 50K somewhere else. But a lot of times when you take 50K in a big city, that 50K in another city is going to go down because it's not as much money in that city. So they're not going to be looking for people like that. That's a, that's a whole big thing. You know what I mean, though, okay? So my thing is if you make 50K, if you're going to date, if you're broke all the time, I would not suggest dating. Um, you really need to learn how to get your finances together, get yourself out of debt. Don't be a man who's just spending like crazy because once you get a woman, you're going to spend even more money that you don't have. I've been down that road. One time when I was young, 23, I spent $1,400 on a girl in a week. You know how much money I was pulling in a month? Like 600. That math don't work in case y'all are doing that. I went into debt for a woman. Stupid! Okay, don't do that, man. Please don't do that. So, what are you? Let me know what y'all think. Y'all think it's crazy. Y'all think it's wild. I don't know. Peace.